What I try to get at is I have realized the songs that I write uh, at times have been trying to reach my hand across the aisle, so to speak, and let's have some common ground and just hopefully have people consider life is short. What we have yeah. is precious. Yeah. Why do you want to be an asshole? Yo, 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 yo. Welcome to the special edition of Slap the Power live from Holland. That's right. Uh, I am, I find myself on a, this gorgeous, gorgeous Sunday uh, in this beautiful open air theater in Holland. Uh, I'll put some pictures up on the, the webs. You'll see it. This week, I'm going to be interviewing one of my favorite human beings who represents uh, the possibly one of the greatest artists I know, one of the most musical people I know, who does live in Florida, who does play music and speak to, a, you know, I would, I would think it's safe to say a primarily red audience. And so the interview this week is going to be with the one and only Mr. Ronnie D. Um, some of you who might know him from the interwebs, and if you don't, there's going to be all kinds of information on his art and him uh, in the interview. Uh, so there's going to be all kinds of ways to get a hold of him there. The subject this week is going to be something that's near and dear to my heart, which is uh, the immigrant song. My mother is Cuban. I associate with the immigrant hustle, the immigrant lifestyle. My relatives that I knew on my Cuban side came over in the boat lifts. My earliest memories of childhood was Tent City in Miami and getting to meet my relatives for the first time. And, and my cousin, Ramosito, he was in jail for protesting Castro. And that's how he was able to come to this country with nothing but the clothes on his back and to watch him and his family, you know, they built businesses and boats and jet skis and houses and everything. It's the true American dream. And yet, at the same time, Southern Florida now has become a hotbed for strongman authoritarian up uprisings in a, in a way of, of trying to assemble power. It's done in this way that is fascinating to me on how people can vote for, say, a Donald Trump or a Ron DeSantis solely on the issue of trying to put down the other or trying to make anybody else who isn't like what Ron DeSantis and his people want. It's, it's pseudo-fascism and it's fascinating to me, but I wanted to preface this interview with a little bit of information to kind of tell you why we're doing this as well. Ronnie is also a second generation immigrant kid. I remember not having anything, all of us kind of being in one room, but we were happy to have each other and there was just so much of a hustle culture of a, okay, well, we'll just work for it culture that I think has been lost that I think is great about the immigrant experience that needs to be lifted up. I think in our country, we talk about immigration as being a problem. What is really the problem? And why is it not a good idea for artists to be able to uh, talk about these things? Or, and so I think that's bullshit, and that's why we're here today. And so I just wanted to kind of pop some figures when we were getting prepared for this interview. Um, we just tripped over a lot of things, and so I want to sort of preface the interview with this, with uh, some of these facts, and hopefully it'll help you guys sort of give some context for why we're doing this episode. Uh, in a single day, over 6,000 migrants are apprehended trying to cross the border. That's 2 million apprehensions a year. Okay, this is a lot. It's only going to get worse. The number of family units apprehended while trying to cross the border has increased by 300% compared to just last year. So that's why this is important. The pace at which this is going to keep increasing uh, is, is uh, unprecedented. Waves of large migrant groups have become common. Back in 2021, at least 70 groups of 100 people or more attempted to cross the border. And the government has lost track of more than 85,000 children who have entered the U.S. without a guardian since 2021. Um, most migrants arriving at the border require medical assistance, mostly due to what they endure in their journey to the U.S. For example, one in three women, one in three women are sexually assaulted on the journey to the border. I, I always say this, you know, we, we experienced this um, in Europe when we were touring in Europe and, and whether it was Syrian refugees or refugees from 
um, up in Northern Africa, uh, when climate change or the war on drugs or just the war in general comes for you and your kids, if a guy showed up with a machete on my front door talking about it, we needed to pay fealty to the drug lords, I'd grab my wife and kids and walk my ass to, to Texas or Arizona too. So um, I think it is not only is it economically sound for us to sort of entertain the idea that we need a solution for this problem. It's necessary from a just sheer humanitarian standpoint between global warming and the failed war on drugs. It's only going to get worse on our southern borders. And so border agents spend 75% of their work time providing humanitarian relief, like feeding people, setting broken bones, and delivering babies, if you can believe that. From 2012 to 2019, over 85,000 people caught by Border Patrol were Mexican. And from 2019 on, this percentage decreased to 20%. And that's because there's been a dramatic increase in apprehensions of people from countries like Nicaragua, Venezuela, and Cuba. These countries are overrun by organized crime, gang and drug trafficking violence, and human trafficking. And so, again, why is this happening? It's happening because U.S. drug policy, or the so-called war on drugs, is partially to blame for sparking violence in Latin America countries and driving a huge surge of migration to the U.S. The U.S. used foreign aid and military assistance as leverage to force Latin American countries to man the front lines on the war on drugs, but this is the, this is the fallout from that failed war on drugs. War on drug operations in countries like Colombia and Mexico pushed drug traffickers into Honduras, Venezuela, Cuba, and El Salvador, and these countries are now overrun by gangs, cartels, and violence. The drug war displaced but didn't eliminate the problem. And research shows that about 85% of the violence experienced in Latin America is related to drug trafficking. 85%. So this drives vulnerable populations to the U.S. Like I said, I, you know, if I was in Syria and I was a farmer and all of a sudden we've been farming for hundreds of years in my family, but global warming or war comes and just kills our farmland, I'm going to have to pick up my family and walk my ass to Turkey or to Germany. And so by making these countries, especially in our hemisphere, um, dangerous and virtually unlivable, the drug cartels have created an incentive for people to flee. And this in turn means more clientele for the human smuggling business. So here's the real big question, right? Again, it's horrible and it's huge, but why should we care? We should care because the illicit drug market continues to fund violent groups in Central and South America, and the war on drugs hasn't reduced drug use. It's actually increased it. Despite its efforts, Mexico remains the leading source of heroin and meth for the American market. And Mexican cartels are the main suppliers of cocaine, heroin, and other narcotics to the U.S. So after 50 years of the war on drugs, drug abuse continues to rise in our country, and every year about 70,000 people die from overdoses. Not, not only has the drug war failed, but it has harmed millions of innocent people. These people were displaced from their countries and now seek refuge in the U.S. There is a gray area. There is an Overton window where we can, as a country, I don't care. It's not red. It's not blue. It's an immigrant song. And that's why I think it's up to artists to talk about this, to bring it to the forefront, to put it into the zeitgeist, because it's going to be the issue where we're going to need to vote on this and we're going to need to be prepared because it's only going to get worse, especially if we don't do anything. So I want you to check the interview, check uh, what Ronnie and I talk about. Hopefully you you enjoy some of it hopefully you get a laugh okay so what can we do there's actually things that we can do number one it's going to be to vote uh, and number one it's going to be to talk to people about these things it's not just a football and we can't just say hey you know don't let them in because number one it does it's not economically sound it's not humanitarian it's not the american way it's not the European way. And we also need to be dealing with facts that work. Economically speaking, if we give people a leg up, if we give them a hand and we assimilate them into society, the economic data shows that it actually grows the economy. It builds the economy. So we need to think about a solution that is in the middle where we can do something because doing nothing does not work. It's, it's never going to work to do nothing, right? And so what can we do beyond that? We can support border angels, which conducts water drops in the desert. It supports migrant shelters on the, border, on the borders, and it helps free asylum seekers from detention and provides legal representation to vulnerable children. You can donate volunteer to host a fundraiser for them or purchase anything from their online shop to help fund their operations. We'll put some information about border angels in the show notes. And last, support RAICES, which is R-A-I-C-E-S. 
RES. It's the Refugee and Refugee and Immigrant Center for Education and Legal Services. And they provide free and low-cost legal services to underserved immigrant children, families, and refugees. You can donate. You can host a fundraiser, pledge your birthday to support their work, donate your airline miles, round up your lift fare as a gift, and more. And so, again... I think it's especially important because there's a there's just a love and a work ethic as a second immigrant child that I feel is worth sharing and it's worth enlightening people on and it's worth talking about. And um, in addition to putting it into our art, I think we can put it into our conversation and our discourse and we can make a difference with some small things. Yo, yo, yo. Welcome to Slap the Power. Special, special <laughs> guest today. This is a special episode from the road. I am just beyond excited to have one of my favorite human beings on planet Earth. One of the most musical people I know. You and Ty Taylor are number one and number <laughs> one. So, uh, and it is a tremendous honor to have the, uh, the one and only, the musical superstar, Mr. Ronnie D, with me on the show. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Yes. My girl Maya is out. I'm looking forward to when she is back. But in the meantime, I am here in beautiful, beautiful Holland, actually in Harlem, Holland, which you, did you know this, Ronnie, that there Dude, is an actual real Harlem? That that's they, beautiful. You can first Harlem. holla from Harlem in <laughs> Holland. <laughs> holla! Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, but one of the things with the show, is, as everybody knows, we want to blend artistry with so many things are kind of on the edges and we have so much an Overton window I believe that we all actually agree on we just happen to be shuttled into these uh, algorithmic teams these red <laughs> and blue and red and blue teams and uh, myself being from California Ronnie being from Florida there's an issue that's particularly uh, near and dear to my heart just as a matter of raising the awareness on things and that is what, what we would call the quote unquote border, right? You know, mm. Trump and his wall, and you know, there was all kinds of things on how to deal with it. But for for the better part of thirty years, it's basically been used as a political cudgel, and there's no real solution, and it's only getting worse. And shamefully, shamefully, Sh shamefully. And I know whether it be in Florida and the situation you're dealing with, there's sort of anti-immigrant. Uh, sentiment that's going there, um, sending people from Texas to Martha's Vineyard, you know, what for a political stunt or wow or, is right. I wanted to explore this at, from an artist's perspective because Ronnie, uh, much like myself, is um, you know from uh, we will say we'll call ourselves second generation immigrant children and see th see that is, see 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 senor. See? So please, um, while I got you here, go ahead and set it up a little bit. I know the story, but uh, you know the Bronx boy, and you're you're. T can you tell everybody your sort of second immigration, your second generation immigrant story, especially from an artist's standpoint? Because your whole family is just you know musically. You have to be musically gifted <laughs> to marry into the family. So well, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Uh, well, my grandparents moved here from Italy. Hey, go figure, huh? Hey, hey, hey. The old and old uh, my grandmother, I believe, was pregnant at the time. And they went through the full, get their passport stamped, Tony, to New York. Mm -hmm. And uh, Joseph and Anna Dina Cola had to hey. stay on Ellis Island in the quarantine. And they got in and raised 10 children. My father's father passed away young. So all 10 children were born, but my father was maybe six or seven years old. And then a single Italian immigrant mom that barely spoke English. And now my father's 10 brothers and sisters, uh, some are deceased right now, but they all achieved the American dream of being happy and healthy and having a family and a solid foundation for the rest of the family, have a huge, wonderful Italian family uh, all over the world. Uh, mostly New York, New Jersey, and Florida, but uh, I and got most to of it, most of it through music, music, right? Yes, I'm... that's the family business is music. Yes, which uh, is yeah, so, you're, you're burying the lead, Ronnie. Yeah, yeah I, thank you. <laughs> uh, my dad, rock star in the 1960s, and set it all up. Uh, we all ate a lot of meals off my dad's records, uh, both as a placemat uh, and financially. Yeah, yeah. and us all growing up in the band and it was 
always immigrant values that uh, governed how we ran our business, whether it be music or a pizza shop or whatever. But it was, uh, we came from nothing. We appreciate what it is to have nothing. So therefore, we're going to be uh, on time is late. You'll yeah. be early. You'll be dressed. You will suffer. And you will look like you're enjoying it. Yeah. <laughs> and you'll be looking good the whole time you're doing it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Because for us to be here, and this, again, was uh, the moral values and fortitude with which I was taught, for us to even be here right now, we overcame incredible odds that you have no idea. So you better do the right thing. Yeah. So we have to do twice as good mm. as the privileged to get half the amount of respect. So that was the thing that weighed heavily. Got to do twice as good to get half the respect. I got to practice twice as hard to get half as good as the perception of these guys. Why? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but that is why we stayed so hard in the rehearsal space, so hard in the woodshed, why they didn't, you know, they didn't suffer any fools, mm. you know. So, you know, that's how we grew up uh, yeah. directly because of our immigrant status when we arrived here. Which is incredible because I I do, you know, those that know me knows my mom's Cuban and, and uh, the relatives that I do know and consider family, the barrio side of things, barrio, uh, came over on the, <laughs> on the boat lifts and it was fascinating because my cousin Ramosito was in jail for protesting Castro. Uh, so I probably know where I get, I get some of that from, but... Um, uh, it was, in, it's interesting to me to come over with nothing, you know, I, I, I remember it's literally the, like the opening scene of Scarface is, you know, you know, is the caricature of what I remember as a kid yes. and, uh, for them to achieve, you know, the house, the boat, the, the, the businesses, jewelry businesses, we are Cuban. Yes. Uh, and so, uh, but nonetheless, the American dream. And it, and it fascinated me because it was it's just a level of hustle that w was always sort of baked in to our, my experience as well. And as I move out to as I moved out to California, and the difference in the in the politics, you see the net result. And we have you know we generally have a lot of problems with with homeless, but this this episode is on immigrants and, and from our mostly from our southern border because we are in a systemic uh, triple storm right now that is going to affect your children you know that is affecting uh, is going to affect the generation that's of coming of voting age right now they're very wise and they're in tune to a lot of the information that that I don't know you know in our country it, it it's used as a political football but nothing ever really kind of gets done and the reality is we're going to have to address this most likely at the ballot box mm -hmm. which means everybody should have would be should be armed with the information and as artists it's tough for us because you're not going to put a bunch of facts into a song you know right you know yeah you know, you're gonna, what are you going to do and and yet at the same time i think uh we have a couple of songs on this record and i'm i'm seeing this tour when we play them especially over here ty sets up holla holla and he sets up uh repeating history from the genesis of where those came from which was out of george floyd and the pandemic and and how um how everything just turned so quickly Yes. And one of the big, the only real big issue that comes out of the right, it seems, is, you know, what to do, you know, about the problem at the border, the problem at the border. And I can only think about that at from coming from an immigrant perspective. And then now as as an artist, shining it back on on onto people and getting to experience that. That's that's what I always call touching the hand of God. And I feel <laughs> like I like that. Yeah, because it's it's full circle, right? You see, you see people that, that that are here in Europe that they they don't deal with the American politics, but they deal they feel George Floyd. They felt when that happened. They felt the protests. They feel the the division. You know yes. that that is that that sort of. And we're running into the the way that power is being assimilated all over the globe now. 
is nationalism in in a lot of ways. You know, we have it with Christian nationalism in our country, and and there's there's different types of nationalism. We were in Slovakia the other day, and they have a slightly different kind of you know racism is is in all kinds of forms. And I'm interested in for you, you and in Florida, you obviously you're in DeSantis territory, and you have a chance to charm and to influence a lot of people. And you, I'm sure you talk to a lot of people that come from a completely different perspective than, you know, us crazy lefties. You know, <laughs> I, I am related to some of those people. Uh, yeah. So that's, thank God my family's strong enough so that we don't, we're not divided over the politics of it all. It's funny how some of the direct descendants of the people that immigrated are now on the other side, which yeah. It's it. I'm befuddled by these things. But with that being said, uh, thank goodness we don't argue about it in the house. Uh, yeah. We all have enough respect for our elders and for humans, yeah. which it really comes down to. Human. Okay, can we disagree on stuff but still be okay and love each other? Yes, we can. So we have that respect in the house, uh, family dinners and such. What I try to get at is I have realized the songs that I write uh, at times have been trying to reach my hand across the aisle, so to speak, and let's have some common ground and just hopefully have people consider life is short. What we have yeah. is precious. Yeah. Why do you want to be an asshole? Uh, that's a big one. And yeah. the most important thing is if I can have people consider doing the right thing, just one more time in their day. The right thing is pretty obvious. Yeah. People do wake up. It's interesting because uh, some of the most effective times that I find when we're playing is the speaking before the songs, right? You know, and it's almost like the influence that the DJ used to have. I, I, that's, I was always fascinated by that, I right? I like the, that. The, this the it's the setup of the song it used to be you know coming you taking you out of a song and landing yes. you on the ground and then picking you back up and taking you to the next song and when ty will will put a room in the palm of his hand with the setup of the story on uh, you know on how you know how many brothers got to go down how many sisters on the ground crying please you know how many times we got to go around before we stop repeating history and it's, you know, he's got a line in there about, you know, his dad talking to him about how his grandfather was freed from slavery. And and I can't help but being one of these kids that, that um, I loved the music of the, of the came out of the civil rights era. And then I was born into a time where I thought it was behind us, right? And I, mm -hmm. and I never thought, my cousin Ramos, he thought I was referring to earlier, uh, you know, he, he's they're they're you know they're red in in Southern Florida, and he was in jail for protesting Castro, <laughs> and and that's how he came get, was able to come to this country and get the opportunity that he didn't get the hand you know the hand up. It was a different time, you know, and there was a hand up that was available, but now because of the failed war on drugs, because of uh, you know systemic uh, economic inequity and because of our heinous policies at the border we are not dealing with a problem that's only getting worse climate change is one of the things that's going to displace more migrants than anything on planet earth that's in coming up in the next decade we're going to have to deal with millions of people moving because of just if uh, you and i talked about this uh, earlier like if there was some guy showing up to my house with a machete talking about, you know, I have to pay fealty to the to the drug warlords. I would grab my kids and I we would, out. Yeah, we out. Yeah, we I, out. Two thousand miles too, right? Yes. I, and we we were touring um, during the whole pre Brexit thing, and there were immigrants that were jumping on the back of our bus to sneak on to the ferry, you know, to be able and. Uh, they were just riding on the, the yes. edge of the bus trying to get in. And, um, you know, Obama brought up this good point the other day. It was everybody was concerned. They were glued to the television about the submarine. And, the, you know, earlier the day before, 800 migrants died off the coast of Greece. The only difference is the five guys that went down in the sub were white and rich. The, the 800 were brown and not. Yeah. 
and I can't not help. That's one, that's the genesis of the show. That's one of the things that I want to that I like to explore is how as artists we can make it more powerful than just in the music because what is reaching across the aisle that's why i like to tie it's the setup before the song yes then has the room you can hear a pin drop and then when the song goes it feels like okay now that's moving the needle do you yeah. you do how do you how do you deal with that because I know you, and I know you know the don't talk about religious religion, don't talk about politics. As an artist, you can't help. But of course, of course, that, you know. And what it, where, how do you feel about you know extending beyond the song, extending beyond the lyrics that you're hoping that they get? If you hope they take the time to kind of look at them or look at them on Spotify, you know, how do, yeah. you, how do you look? How do you view that? Well, action speaks louder than words. Yeah. And my goal is to be able to look in the mirror and be happy with who I see and who I am and have my kids be proud of me and be an, yeah. exam and be an example for them. Like, again, my father, mother, immigrant relatives, uh, grandparents, great-grandparents are and were. And I try to watch, you know, very carefully what I divulge about my uh, personal self to the kids until they're ready for it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the too much information is also going to be something uh, that's going to hamper our future, I think, not help it. With you mean, so, well, first off, you were talking about your kids? As yes, as my kids and, and yeah, kids, kids in general. But yeah. uh, that's how I extend my art. Uh, 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 pardon me. That's how I extend myself beyond just being a guy singing about, you know, these are precious times. Let's get all together. Let's do, yeah. let's change the world, man. Right. We have to oh. put that into action. Yeah. We have to be that person, be the yeah. person that we want to be. And that's, that's what I do. Yeah. I, I mean, I love that. That's, that's kind of what I'm, that's what I'm trying to square that circle with the, with the show is, okay, uh, I, I think we're more, way more alike um, then we are different in so many things and especially getting to travel the world like we do it's so fortunate because you know we, we reference this all the time Maya and I do that uh, you know I don't even think 40% of America less than 40% of America has a passport I believe and ah, I believe and it so how you know the, there's a there's just a perspective that gets broadened and and when we get to do this when we're so fortunate to be able to do this but then on top of that as artists you get to feel the effect of touching someone and 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 changing their lives for as for as kind of hokey as that sounds and that's what i want to explore with the show is through art artistry how do we raise awareness on that overton window where we're more alike than we are, you know, there's the, there's things that we have in common. And from an immigrant perspective, again, I, I think this is going to be one of the key issues coming up in the power battle for the for all the chips and marbles in the game. It's it's kind of one of those issues that is it's very important to people, especially people on the southern border, because climate change is uh, you know, it, oh, in a single day. Over six thousand migrants are trying to cross into our country, six thousand. And that's two million apprehensions a year. Yes. And so that's only going to probably double and triple. So we can't yell at Hunter Biden's laptop and not actually get at the real problem, because that is a. That is a it's a humanitarian thing. It's economically we've kind of figured out how to how to try and deal with it in California, probably better than a lot of places. But, you know, our, our borders m massive and Spanish is, you know, you kind of almost have to know Spanish to live in Los Angeles. Which ah, I love. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because like, we know it. But but it's also. Um, most people are like, you know, especially coming from Florida, it's like, you don't speak the language, you can get out, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's right. And right. uh, and I, that I feel like is an area where we we have to figure out how to on the edges uh, heal the divide, you know. And that's that's why I'm I'm interested in exploring this. I, I bash on Florida all the time, and I did it on our first episode. I you know took a giant dump on Florida, but it was it's out of love. It it really is, but it's also out of curiosity because. 
um, like you said, actions speak louder than words. There's a lot of, I think, inf- there's a lot of information that we can help share as artists, and we can't make we can't make you know statistical videos and make music <laughs> that's going to interest people, right? Yes. You know, that's yes. but how do we cross almost music with John Oliver? How do we cross you know m- to, to me music with uh, your Bill Mars and things like that? That's what's uh, again Green Day. You know they 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 got to do the uh, theme music for Bill, but I'm talking cool. the next level. The next you know the next level. How do we do it? First of all, you were you don't you didn't want to say you know, but having your having someone like Joey D as your dad, and getting to look from a, you know like from the Bronx and getting to come at it from this always be grateful for what we had, you know I think that's that's something that we all share. Yet it it seems kind of lost. It's a it's a thing where I'm fearful you're going to take what I have. So. There's a different feeling in the air for sure. The last, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 years, slowly yep. but surely getting more uh, intense outside, shall we say. Yeah. Um, and it's going to pop. The bubble's going to burst. There's going yep. to be a renaissance. Hear me. Mark my words. There's going to be an artistic renaissance where art is going to... Uh, have such a hold over the public consciousness again. There's so many distractions right now. Yeah. Uh, but there is going to be a renaissance. AI taking over the world like the Matrix, that is not going to happen. The people are still going to need their 10,000 hours, yeah. as we have spoke about. And yeah. just no matter how intense it might get, I have faith no matter how long it takes, that people are going to do the right thing. This country was built on the backs of immigrants. If it was not for immigrants, uh, and I know this firsthand, New Orleans would be a mold-covered swamp. The immigrants bailed us out, literally, with buckets going into the worst situations, like my grandparents and great-grandparents work jobs that nobody wants to work. For yeah. hardly any money, my uncle shoveled coal in the basement of a giant tenement building. That's all he did all day long, all yeah. night long. Shoveled the coal, sat there yeah. by the by the heater, the boiler, whatever it was. Yeah, there's going to be a renaissance. Art is going to change the world. We as artists, we're grassroots. But look, what has nourished the world for this entire millennium is the grass. Mm -hmm. And the animals eat the grass, and we eat the animals, and so on. It's a beautiful, symbiotic, synergistic circle. I sound crazy right now to a lot of people, but I don't care. Yeah. yeah. We're going to be able to change the world with one song, with one piece, with one poem, with one podcast. We can do this. Yes, yes. That's fantastic. Well, let's end it there. I'm going to keep pinging you for because the Florida-California connection especially as the fight continues, kind of, you know, we talked about this. There's a systemic issue that is baked into the Electoral College and into the filibuster that we'll examine at another time, especially for people out of the country that are trying to, that are interested in what is, what is all that. But it is a difference between Florida and, and California, and yet you and I are brothers from another mother. So the connection between the two, I'm going to continue to be fascinated about how it's going there. You can keep me <laughs> filled in. All right. I'll be yeah. your man on the street. Yeah, here we are. Ronnie D. Street, man man you know, on the street. That guy, that guy, he's fighting Mickey Mouse. He's fighting <laughs> State right. Farm. He's, you know, he's got the worst inflation in all the country. It's Don't get me started on the insurance stuff going on down here. That's what I'm talking about. Incredible. I mean, it's, it's climate change based, which is also it, it, it factors into the same immigrant now, situation. Now, back to the climate change thing. I know we're trying to wrap it up, but I don't yeah. care. It's the Internet. It's great. Uh, oh, I love it. I love it. I might have a guest for you, okay. uh, a personal friend of mine and somebody that I'm involved with creatively is uh, a Ph.D. oceanographer. He is on the World Council of Climate Change. And he is on the board, I think, at NOAA. That's N-O-A-A, for those of you scoring at home. I know it. And he, I know it. I know it. He and I are going to be working on a eight-part docuseries for, uh, you know, that's going to go to charity, the profits, most of it, for uh, and about climate change. So uh, that's all supposed to start shooting in September. 
So Perfect. Yeah. I might need I might see, need some bass tracks, yo. Yo, yo, how about your boy? Yeah, I got yes. you. All right. I got you. No, but we we actually we're doing a couple of uh, setups for some episodes on climate change, and it's tough because uh, you know. As it's it, 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 when we make music, nobody wants to. It's tough to make you know music that people want to hear that I, that is kind of on on that, uh, and it's 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 hard to say because it's hard for those words to come out of my mouth. Yeah. Because it, it feels it feels like it should be easier. If it, it should be easier to sing about, um, you know, wanting to protect Mother Earth, as I say it, as the words come yeah. out of my mouth, I, I'm like, yes. there's no way to make that sound good in a, in a melody, you know, but Mother Earth and things like that. But I, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, yeah. it's, it feels like it should be something that we should be able to, to talk about. The problem is that some problems are so big nowadays that we're paralyzed. We're paralyzed yes. by it. We're, we're led to believe Oh well, you know this is uh, what a Greenpeace is just going to misspend the money, or you know whatever it is. It's like you wind up arguing about everything but the thing, and that's why I want to action, um, action. 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 It's in the name of science, yes. love, yes. action, progress, mother. So <laughs> I appreciate you taking the time, and I especially appreciate it. It is one thirty in the morning here, and I appreciate I love you for this. Can yeah. we can we have our theme song play, which would be Edgar Winter's White Trash, Save Our Planet? You know that one? <laughs> Fantastic I song. I don't. I don't. You'll have to send Roll it to me. Roll the tune. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love you to death. Thank you for uh, thank you for doing this, and 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 uh, I appreciate it. I appreciate you even willing to be to explore into that because I know. You know, you're you're in you're in you're in red country, baby. So it is. Hey. Listen, yeah. I, I just, I don't want this to go too far. I just, I want to be totally serious. And, and yeah. I'm, I'm going to look up on the screen. I'm going to go right into the camera this time. I'm talking okay. to you people. Hey. Slap the motherfucking power. Hey. Okay? There's your fucking moment. Edit this shit. Edit oh, this shit. slap the motherfucking power. Slap the motherfucking power. That's what I'm talking about. Save the planet. That's this it. is. That's it, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> I love you to death. Slap the power. <laughs> Boom. Boom. Bitches. Bitches. Bye, baby. Slap the Power is written and produced by me, Rick Barrio Dill, and by Maya Sykes. Executive producer, Duff Ferguson. Our senior producer is Sabrina Seward. Associate producer, Bree Corey. Audio and video engineering and studio facilities provided by Slap Studios LA with distribution through our collective home for social progress and art, Slap the Network. If you have ideas for a show you want to hear or see, or you would like to be a guest artist on our show, please email us at info at slapthepower.com.